Hello and welcome to this episode of the North Andover Journal. I'm your host, Alexa DeFilippo. In this week's episode, you can look forward to highlights from the most recent Scarlet Knight Robotics Competition. We have an update from the town manager, Andrew Mailer, and a new merchant of the month of February. All that and more in this episode of the North Andover Journal. Hi everyone and welcome to the Merchant of the Month. I'm Dawn Pease, President of the North Andover Merchants Association. And this month, we're at Vector Gaming, located at 4 High Street, Suite 122 in North Andover. And I'm here with Robert Skinian and Alex Voss. Welcome, guys. Thank you Thank for you. having us. Um, so tell us, what is Vector Gaming? Vector Gaming is a LAN center for players of all ages to come play PC games, play board games, play card games. We have open table space, and everyone is welcome all ages. So what are eSports? I hear the term all the time, and I, I don't know what it means at all. So eSports is a current phenomena of uh, competitive gaming, and basically what it is is the professionalization of gaming. So colleges, professional sporting organizations are all picking up basically these brand name players, and they are playing these premier games either for money, scholarship, pride, but it's really the evolution of gaming into a competitive format. So what opportunities exist within eSports? So eSports is a rapidly uh, growing field. Um, it's gone from a few hundred million to now estimated over uh, 1.3 billion by 2020. And um, basically, there are opportunities of all kinds. So uh, much like the Boston Red Sox, you have nine players on the field, but there's a whole organization that goes into supporting those. So there are opportunities for actual gamers to climb through the ranks and become professionals. And then there are lots of opportunities for audiovisual production, um, uh, marketing, um, public relations, the business side of things, running events, planning the logistics of all these things. Um, so really, eSports is, in many ways, like traditional sports, where there's a large coalition supporting a very few people who are actually playing in the event. And these are kind of the opportunities that we are trying to get parents and schools to focus on. I had no idea. You know, to me it was a video game. But it's nice to know that there's more to it. So how can parents get involved? So a lot of um, parents right now are not engaging in um, this space. We've seen this from administrators and from parents, and there are some early adopters who are very much into it. But um, for example, if your child plays baseball or hockey, you're very likely going to be involved in that. You're going to drive them to the sport. You might go uh, to the batting cages with them. You know, you're going to be actively involved in what your child is doing. And we want parents to pick this up with video gaming as well. So learning about some of these opportunities, especially um, there are a lot of internship opportunities with some of these premier organizations in media. Um, for example, audiovisual or writing articles, reporting on these uh, events, um, and on the games themselves. So these are all things that students can do while they're still in high school or in college to kind of build up their professional resume that's within something that they really enjoy. So what are you trying to accomplish locally? We want to create a safe gaming space where everyone feels welcome. We have 10 PCs set up behind us that anyone can come in and play. We have three tables set up at any time for free to play board games or Magic the Gathering. We have Magic the Gathering sanctioned events. We have board game nights where families can come in, grab a game. We just want a community space for everyone to come in, have fun, and play safely. Another thing we're looking to do is engage school administrators, engage parents in um, basically adopting this into the high school age group. So um, this is very much a top-down thing right now. There's a lot of investor money going into professional organizations and even into some colleges. Um, a lot of colleges are starting to pick this up and offer scholarships both for their competitive teams and their club teams. But there isn't a lot of support right now on the high school level and that's something that's still kind of growing organically. So that's something that we're trying to bring to kind of the Massachusetts area in general, engaging a lot of schools, trying to get them to bring out gaming clubs to field um, esports teams, 
um, in age-appropriate games and kind of work with administrators to help them set up the structure that these players need to take this love of gaming and translate it into the growing field of esports. Okay. Well, you're showing me an aspect of gaming that I didn't know existed, and that's a social aspect. I didn't realize that gaming could be so social. So I understand that you're also active within the community and giving back into your community. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Some of the things we've sponsored in the past include the uh, Furball, which was held in Andover, and that was a charity fundraiser basically for the Merrimack River Feline Rescue Society. I think I got that one right. <laughs> um, with a cash donation and then um, an event donation as well. We've also supported um, other like local causes. We generally will donate some kind of gift certificate or day passes so that they can use them as raffle items um, or as prizes or whatever to support that. Um, we've also taken all of our equipment down to school, uh, Shawshin Tech when they were interested in like, trying out what an eSport format would look like at their school. And basically we just break down this whole center and bring it down and set it up there so that they can kind of see what that 5v5 uh, more professional format would feel like. So kids and gaming can get a little loud. What do you guys do that's different? We're open to the public, generally speaking, from 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. on weekdays, um, and then Saturday from noon to 11. Uh, during the normal kind of business hours here, um, we have like a quiet hour uh, gaming club. So people can join that, and it's basically an unlimited play uh, from the noon to five period during weekdays. Um, so they can do that and then just come in whenever they want, grab a PC and go. As long as they stay quiet. As long as they stay <laughs> quiet. <laughs> well, thank you guys so much for joining us on the show, and we'll see you next month. Welcome to the world of VEX Robotics, where there's a plethora of hardworking students enhancing their creativity, problem solving, and utilizing teamwork skills through engineering and design. Kids work together to build and compete in an epic robot showdown. Every student plays a role in this journey. My job was to code the pretty much the entire thing. Uh, I'm partially responsible for controlling it and fixing any issues in the programming? Well, for me, I do most of the building, uh, pretty much the whole thing. And Eric does the coding, and Brian writes the daily logs. My name is Shamsun Raman. We're on Team H, and um, my job in building the robot, we, um, me and my brother actually worked together and coded the bot together. And um, we worked on the drivetrain, the uh, mobile goal, and the arm lift, and we had to uh, work with the code the whole trimester after uh, solving problems from the first competition we came into. And we just worked on that code and worked on those problems. And uh, we fixed it all, and then I think we're ready to go for this competition. So I'm on team E, and I partially am a coder and a builder as well. I've been, I, I've been working on building the robot mostly, not any of the coding. I looked at the code once, it was hard, and I couldn't figure it out. And um, but I, we, I've been I feel like I've been doing pretty good building the robot with the rest of the team. Uh, my job I'm the no, I'm the engineer I'm part of the engineering notebook so I just document everything that the team does and occasionally run into issues. Uh, we do have one worry of some minor technical difficulties that we've been running into, but we've been troubleshooting them pretty well and I am not overly worried about any one thing. Yeah, like our bot does make a couple weird noises, but we hope that won't be an issue during the competition. Um, I have a lot of worries and a lot of concerns. <laughs> our claw mechanism isn't that great, and um, our arm extension is weak as well, so there's a lot of like, torque going on. Uh, it's been pretty hard, because just the amount of like setbacks we've had during it, but I think we're going to be able to do it. It's We're starting to get an actual robot together, so that's good. But in the end, students learn a whole lot and always have fun. Uh, being able to compete next to all these other designs that are probably much more successful than us, uh, it's a good learning experience in my opinion, and it's a lot of fun. I think that 
it's a good experience because we learned a lot of teamwork and how to manage our time as a group. And it was really helpful because this is going to be useful in the future. We're just looking forward to see everyone, all our friends, and um, just winning. Um, I'm looking forward to probably just like the live action and improving ours and seeing how well we can compete. I just can't wait to be there. See y'all, I don't, I think there's gonna be more teams there than there was last time because of the time. And yeah, I just can't wait. I'm so excited. Town meeting has always been a platform where controversial issues are brought into the spotlight. And now, with the knowledge of all of the many benefits of medical marijuana, it's no wonder that grow facilities like the one being proposed here tonight for Osgood Landing are brought into the spotlight as well. It's a controversial topic here in the town of North Andover, and we've got it covered for North Andover Cam. I'm joined by Dan. He's a resident of North Andover. Dan, how are you feeling about this bill being passed? Uh, I'm excited to be here for the town meeting and I'm pretty adamant about voting against it. I do not want to see this industry come to North Andover. Can I ask you why? Give us a little bit more detail about why you believe that. A couple of reasons. I, I did not want to even see medical marijuana uh, approved for this state. I, I'm not interested in marijuana as a gateway drug and also I don't want my property values to go down. There's going to be a public perception from other people that are like-minded like myself and I don't know if that's the majority or not but other people, there will other, be other people that won't want to move into this town based on that industry. And I know we have your mother here with us. You know, I think we have enough problems with drugs that we don't need to, you know, take the next step and make even a larger problem because it seems from what I hear is that when it, with the whole opiate epidemic, you know, it starts with marijuana and the next step, the next step, and before you know it, kids are dying in the streets and that's not that's what we're looking for. I'm joined by Jim Zanakis. He's the co-chair of the Osgood Revitalization Project here in town. Jim, I've seen you around town door knocking, talking to folks. You own a store in town. I mean, nobody is Mr. North Andover quite like Jim. Tell me what it's been like going around and getting the hype up about this meeting tonight. Sure. Well, uh, I'm the co-chairman of the Osgood Revitalization Coalition. Uh, our goal is to get as many people here as possible to vote yes in Article 4, which is the rezoning of the, of the property so that uh, cannabis can be cultivated at the site. Why do you feel so passionate about bringing this to North Andover? Well, as you know, in 2016, uh, the law became that it can be grown in Massachusetts. Uh, the, uh, the property has been dormant for about 14 years, and this represents a tremendous opportunity for the town to create jobs and generate, generate much-needed tax revenue for the town of North Andover services. And someone who's created jobs in North Andover, you know, you know what that's all about. You're a boss, you're an owner. Tell me what that'll do for the town even five years from now. What do you project as far as revenue growth? Sure, this is a much bigger scale, of course. Uh, we're talking about an $8 million revenue package to the town of North Andover, which is just absolutely tremendous. It's a $5 million uh, host community agreement, roughly $2 million in additional taxes, and a, a $1 million community fund as well. So we're talking about a lot more uh, much need, badly needed funds for great town services. Uh, and then as far as jobs are concerned, there are two, it's twofold. The cultivation facility will uh, generate between 500 and 1,000 jobs. Those are uh, modest paying jobs. And then we're looking for the cultivation uh, center to be where we really hit it out of the park, where research and development can, can come into the old Bell Labs building and create some tremendous opportunities for people who are in the science, uh, science and technology uh, world. Unfortunately, there's some misconceptions about the product itself. It has a tremendous medical application and uh, I, I, I really do believe in that. I hope that some people can see past some of the stigmas of the, of the product that's being requested to, to grow. I was delighted by the good behavior, by the sense of purpose and responsibility that my neighbors, our fellow citizens, had tonight. They were uh, serious about the business before them. They took everything into consideration and they came out with a judgment. And that's what town meeting is all about, coming out with a considered judgment. I'm very, very pleased and I think there's some universality that town meeting was fair, open and efficient. And that's what my job is to do, try to keep it fair, open and efficient. 
All right, so the night here at North Andover High School has wrapped up. Article 1 did pass, so there will be no medical marijuana facility brought to the town of North Andover. Lots of mixed reviews here in the field house tonight. We're glad to be bringing you this coverage from North Andover Cam. Be sure to stay tuned on our website and our social media channels for more information. Hello everybody, this is Andrew Mailer, town manager, giving you uh, this month's update on the journal. And there's a few things I certainly want to talk about. Uh, we're beginning to do the kinds of work you'd expect, again, leading to budget. We talk about that for a couple of journals now, and I think everything is moving along smoothly. Uh, school department adopted the school superintendent's budget, which was based upon my recommendation. So we're traveling along to a consensus budget, which we always feel is a good way to approach it rather than a conflict. Uh, more importantly, we have some exciting capital projects happening around town. Uh, the DPW facility, for those of you who've been uh, by uh, the Osgood site, is uh, substantially complete. We're wrapping up a few items so that we can move the staff into that operate into that location. I know that North Andover Cam will uh, broadcast from there and give you a sense of what's happening in that new facility. We'll probably have some kind of grand uh, reopening so people, so the public gets to see uh, what is the fifth project in the in the facility master plan. Very exciting plan. The next project after that is the kindergarten project. I've signed the contracts for that. The work will start to begin. You'll see work in earnest as soon as the winter breaks. And so you'll start to see, uh, that's a module construction, so there'll be surface work, and then the building will start to show up. But we're planning an August 2018 opening for the new kindergarten facility. Something very, very exciting and something that has a positive impact on our school system and the entire town. Um, finally, we're moving forward with a standalone new senior center, uh, something that I can't reveal all the details at point, but again, extraordinarily exciting. The opportunity to have a state-of-the-art senior center that it really takes into consideration what we expect for the future in terms of our expanding senior population and the types of uses that are um, important as we proceed and take care of our seniors moving forward. And finally, uh, probably the most exciting project is a significant rehabilitation of the, school, the open spaces between the current middle school and Atkinson School, uh, Hayes Stadium and those open ball fields. We have a plan and a proposal and a method of funding that over the next several years will transform that into really a community center for recreation. I don't mean a community center meaning a building. I mean a place where families can go uh, and bring their children, uh, adults and seniors can go to, to take advantage of a walking facility, multi-generation facility where grandparents can take their kids to the playground, families can take their kids to uh, ballparks and things like that. We expect an amphitheater so that we can have some concerts and public events there. We'll continue to have the fireworks there moving forward and really we see that as the recreational hub of the community and we're hoping to begin that project as early as the spring of 2019, complete it through multiple phases but to be done hopefully by 2021 and it, it really will be an extraordinary project that everyone in the community will be able to use. So we're excited about all of those kinds of things happening in the community. Uh, we're also preparing to move forward with our Maytown meeting a couple of months from now and everything is uh, working well in that, in that way. Uh, one final note, we still have a winter parking ban in effect. Uh, when, you, when you see this tape, we will have had a, a small snowstorm in the last couple of days. But please uh, remind everybody that um, we're not allowed to park in most, uh, on most streets overnight during the winter parking ban period. And hopefully over the next six or eight weeks, the weather will clear up and that ban will end and we'll be able to proceed with both better weather and an opportunity to park on the streets. So uh, just something to, as a reminder as we move forward through the rest of the winter. I hope everything is well and, and everybody else is doing well and we'll see you next month. Before we end the show, I'd like to leave you all with some upcoming community events. Brightview Senior Living is hosting a caregiver support group on Thursday, February 15th at 6 p.m. If someone you love is living with dementia, this educational and supportive group will make it possible for you to learn more about the disease and help you navigate the daily challenges of caring for someone with memory loss. You can RSVP to Kim O'Connell by calling 781-686-2582 or emailing koconnell at bvsl.net. Spend your President's Day at North Andover Cam learning how to use their Canon 70D DSLR camera to shoot beautiful video. Learn how to adjust the aperture, ISO, shutter speed, and more to get the perfect look for your video. This workshop is from 12 p.m. to 3 p.m. on President's Day, Monday, February 19th. North Andover Cam will also be having their first Stop Motion Saturday of 2018 on February 17th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Your short stop motion film will look better than ever with North Andover Cam's new HD stop motion gear. This event is $5 for North Andover Cam members and $10 for non-members. If you'd like to RSVP 
Or if you'd just like more information for either of these events, you can email Susan at smartin at northandovercam.org or call her at the studio at 978-687-6570. The Stevens Coolidge Place will be having a children's snow sculpture building contest on February 21st from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Spend the morning building a sculptural masterpiece with snow and other found natural objects. A bonfire and hot cocoa will be there to keep you warm. Contact Kate Bebo at kbebo at thetrustees.org for more information. As always, if you have a news story, an idea for a segment, or if you just want to get involved, please email us at thejournal at northandovercam.org. And if you want to see these stories the second they happen, you can find them airing on our channel in between shows or on our social media pages like our Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. That will wrap things up for this week. I'm Alexa DeFilippo. Thanks for watching.